So I'm in Warsaw for the Scala conference and after all the travel trouble I'm finally here. Uh, so I'll be speaking tomorrow at the conference. I'll tell you what the plan is, but for now I'm just going to get dinner with a friend. Okay, I'm back. Let me start by saying why I'm making this video the way it is. I know this isn't the usual kind of content that you see on this channel, but long ago I said I would be making conference videos. When conferences are back, I will probably make content about that as well. So this is exactly it. Uh, Scholar is my first big, like real conference since the pandemic hit. And I really, I was really excited to make this kind of video finally. And yeah, I'm going to share the whole experience with you, what it is like uh, getting to the conference and just walking in the in the hallways, talking to people, watching the talks, chilling and all the, the kind of stuff that comes with uh, the experience of going to a tech conference, uh, in particular a Scala conference in Poland. I would also like to mention the travel trouble that got me here two hours late. I was supposed to take like a five hour train. One hour before the end, we were told that we cannot move anymore because a door cannot lock. That doesn't seem like a thing that would stop a train, but apparently it is. So we had to switch to another train, go to stops to another station and then switch again and then stand for an hour because there were already people in that train which were onboarding. So uh, yeah, that was a fun change of plans, but in general I didn't have a lot of plans for today. So this was not a major change. And yeah, I made it here. I made it to my favorite uh, ramen place in the city, which I visit every time I'm here. And now I have some time for, for prep for the conference talk. I'm speaking about Smithy and Smithy for us. I mentioned this in the announcement video, which you may have not seen, or maybe you have seen it, uh, link in the description. And I'm not going to reveal too much of the talk. There will be a recording, there will be a slides link on my speaker deck. But yeah, for today, the plan is to do one more test run of the talk and see what the timing is like. And I'm going to try and replicate the same result tomorrow. I'm not very stressed about this because I have given talks at conferences of this scale before, including one of one of the Scholar editions. But it's been a while since I talked to such a huge crowd live. And yeah, I'm just wondering what this will be like. But I'm also very happy to meet some of the people I haven't met in years because they were there were no international conferences for, for a while. So I'll do that test run now and tomorrow we'll go to the first conference day and see what it's like. All right, it's pretty late and I better get some sleep. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, let's go. After getting to the venue and saying hi to some friends, it was time to get started with the actual conference. <laughs> Okay, I start. Okay, so I'm gonna come here. Welcome to Scholar 2023. It's been a while since the last time we have seen each other here. The first talk by Adam Varsky was a hit. He showed the Ox library and how it builds on the Loom project. I thought it was an interesting and fresh idea and something that was much needed in the Scala ecosystem. I'm looking forward to seeing how it evolves and how other concurrency libraries can learn from it. Then we had a talk from Daniel Chokerland from JVM. He was showcasing some parts of his latest functional programming course and it looked great, but most of all I was impressed at how good he was at presenting live, having mostly done online recorded content before. From the actual talk, the part that made the biggest impression on me was the Tyrion library, which I'm definitely going to try out in some upcoming project. After this set of talks, it was time to spend a while in the so-called hallway track. This was the part I missed most, and even though I did miss a couple talks, I knew I could catch up on those after the conference, and this wouldn't be true for all the chit-chat with people on the corridor. I had some coffee from a former employer's booth, 
went to a couple more talks, and then it was time for lunch. This event was also the first time I saw most of my current team, so we got lunch in the ramen place together. By the way, friendly recommendation, a one hour break is not enough to go to a place 10 minutes away and be back in time for the next talk. After lunch, the first talk I went to was about Scala and WebAssembly. Frankly, I had trouble following it because my 6 hours of sleep started catching up with me, but I'm hopeful about the future of Scala on this platform and it seems like it's moving in the right direction. Then we had some more exposure to Scala on the front end with Scala.js and how it fits into a full stack project, including integration with existing JavaScript code without a big bang. At this point I was starting to get anxious before my talk as it was the next one, but when I got to the stage and started talking, I forgot about all of it and somehow made it through. The last talk of the day by Nicolas Rinaudo was full of pretty diagrams and followed the path Nicolas took as part of his learning experience. If you weren't there and want one recommendation for a talk to see, this is the one for the first day. That talk is also the one where the C in the Scholar logo broke in half in the middle of a sentence. Sadly, I don't have that on video, but I have part of the audience reaction, so enjoy it as much as we did. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards I had dinner with more friends from work and then we went to the official after party. Strange name because there was still one day left. And honestly I'm not a fan of the location, I think the organizers could have picked a less noisy place. But I had to leave early anyway as I was super tired. What a day. I'm absolutely exhausted. This has been an incredible event so far and it's still one day to go. My talk, I think, went pretty well. It went better than I thought after the test runs, the dry runs that I did before. And I know I could have done better with some better prep and probably better slides as well, but there's no changing that anymore. So uh, I think it was okay. People seem to have liked it, and this seems to have caused some spark of interest in Smithy and Smithy for us. So happy about that. And there's just one more thing for me to do today, which is to show you the, the speaker gift that I got, and then I'll just see you tomorrow. So I got some chocolate cake, it's a kind of waffle cake. Got some sweets, like classic Polish kind of sweets. There's also a quite large mug, some stickers and a magnet. So it's day two, I'm actually going to be late already. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting breakfast at the same place as yesterday. On day two, the first talk I made it to was the one by Magda Stożek. She talked about opaque types, what problems they solve, and what their limitations are. It was probably the most beginner-friendly talk of the conference, at least out of the ones I've seen. The next talk by Michał Pavlik continued on the topic of writing safe code, using libraries like Refined and Tapir. Michał also showed Pass4S, a library I started at Ocado, which is now open source. The last talk I saw before lunch was delivered by Camille Kloch, in which he showcased parts of the Catifex standard library, based on a couple real-world examples. Definitely a talk worth watching if you're not familiar with these. On the way to lunch, I couldn't miss the opportunity to attempt a muscle-up in the playground, just like in 2018. I guess it's a tradition now. Three days of ramen in a row would have been too much, so we just got Indian food this time. As I mentioned, one hour for lunch is not enough, so I was late to the talk by Valentin Casas, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. The part I did see was focus on contravariant functors and using them to generate code derived from stream schemas. And I really like contravariant functors, so I'll definitely be on the lookout for the recording. Then it was time for a talk by Tomas Mikula about Libretto. I had heard of the library before, but this talk helped demystify its goals, and I might give it a try sometime soon. The next talk was a look into the future of Scala, which is very promising, and I'm incredibly excited for it. The first big thing that'll happen is the long-term support 3.3 release. Last but not least, we had Gabriel Volpe speaking about the architecture he used to build an application in his latest book. After the talk, Gabriel ran a giveaway raffle for the book, live, using Scala CLI in a GitHub action, so the emotions were running high. And finally, this was the end of the conference. Again, I am thankful to the organizers for doing it, and I hope to see another Scala next year. So I am now back at home and I just wanted to again say thank you to all the organizers, all the speakers and everyone I talked to who made this event very special and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on future events. Now if you liked this video and would like to see more of such content in the future, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.